Welcome to Diamond Lake Online. I am Pastor Mark and it is so good to have you here. Merry Christmas. What a joyful time to come together. I know we're not together physically, but we are spiritually. And tonight of all nights as we go to the cradle, to the manger with the Christ child, we know without a doubt that we are bound together by Christ. A special thank you here as we come towards the end of the year for all of you that have kept active with your pledges and sent in uh, donations. We are in really good shape and I thank you for that. And if, uh, if you could send in, if you're behind, just send it on in and we give thanks for all the many blessings um, of Diamond Lake. Despite this pandemic, the spirit is moving and we are being stirred to learn follow and serve. So as you prepare to worship tonight, let us prepare our hearts and our minds. Let us remember to celebrate and give thanks each day for the goodness of God and to pray daily for your family, for your friends, for our community, for our church, and for our world. It makes a huge difference. Thanks for stepping, stopping in to our online, so online service. Take good care. This evening, we light the four blue candles of the Advent season and the white candle in the center, which signifies the arrival of the Christ child and the beginning of the Christmas season. O oh God, our Father, you have brought us again to the glad season when we celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that his Spirit may be born anew in our hearts this day and that we may joyfully welcome him to reign over us. Open our ears that we may hear again the angelic chorus of old. Open our lips that we, too, may sing with uplifted hearts. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward all, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Good news, you were weary and heavy burdened. Sing for great joy, you who are tired and shackled with pain, for the Lord our Redeemer has come. We light the Christ candle as a sign to the world that today, in the city of David, a Savior is born, who is Christ the Lord. We no longer have to fear the darkness, for our light has come. That light that enlightens all people has broken into our world, and the world will never be the same again. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, the ninth chapter. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thanks be to God.
reading from St. Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. Oh, sing a song of Bethlehem, of shepherds watching there, and of the news that came to them from angels in the air. The light that shone on Bethlehem fills all the world today. Of Jesus' birth and peace on earth, the angels sing always. Oh, sing the song of Nazareth, of sunny days of joy. Oh, sing the fragrant flower's breath, and of the sinless boy. For now the flowers of Nazareth in every heart may grow. Now spreads the fame of his dear name on all the winds that blow. Oh, sing the song of Galilee, of lake and woods and hill, of him who walked upon the sea and bid the waves be still. For though like waves on Galilee Dark seas were trouble roll. When faith has heard the Master's word, falls peace upon the soul. Oh, sing a song of Calvary, its glory and dismay. Of him who died upon the tree and took our sins away. For he who died on Calvary is risen from the grave. And Christ the Lord by heaven adored is mighty now to save. A reading from St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration, and it was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. The word of the Lord.
A reading from St. Luke, the second chapter. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch o'er their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the, in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. The word of the Lord. A reading from St. Luke, the second chapter. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Thanks be to God. Christmas pipes, Christmas pipes, calling us home on Christmas night. Call us from far, call us from near, play me your Christmas pipes. Christmas bells,
rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give the heed to what we say. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. A reading from St. Matthew, the second chapter. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and he learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thanks be to God.
A reading from St. John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God.
Maybe it's because I once lived just off Interstate 85 in Atlanta with its thousands upon thousands of cars and trucks passing below our balcony every day. Or maybe it's because I now live close to descending and ascending planes from the nearby airport that I have grown keenly aware of just how noisy a place our world has become and at times grow weary of the din and the commotion of it all. They are noisy places, the interstates and runways of our lives, perhaps no more so than other streets and airports of the world's great cities that have been gilded with international fame, the Madison Avenues, the Wall Streets, and the Sunset Boulevards, the O'Hares, the Heathrows, and the LaGuardias of fortune and fame. But even small towns with their interstates and tractors also reflect, I suppose, the noise of the world in which we live. You have noticed it too, I'm sure. Noise that confronts the eye as well as the ear. Neon lights clamoring for attention. The paradise lounge promising a paradise it can never deliver. The glitz of a casino bright with the allure of gold too often turns to brass for many who cannot draw the line. Billboards blaring the merits of this Detroit four-cylinder over that of Tokyo's. Infomercials hawking still another new product guaranteed to wipe out the scourge of static cling. Rising swells of noise from Broadway to Iraq. Gunfire and bombings, grief-stricken women wailing for husbands and sons they will never hold again. Bewildered children scampering amid the rubble of bombed-out neighborhoods. A world filled with noise from Afghanistan to Bethlehem where pilgrims haggle with shopkeepers over the price of an olive wood creche while the civil authorities tighten security against the continuing fear of terrorists in the city in which half the world sings this night. And back on the interstates of this country there's heard a clamor eager to provide homes for Funko Pop figurines, Marvel toys, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Captain America, and American Girl dolls, while the real babies of the ghetto flats and the refugee camps have no real home to lay their head. As the next generation of computer games, The Legend of Zelda, Super Mario, Odyssey, and Halo Infinite, stalk their quarry through a maze of pyrotechnics, punches, and pows. The din of the season continues. Open till midnight, pandemic or not. No billing until February. Postpone the pain with plastic and the internet and make that connection Christmas connection. Hark the herald angels, wish you a merry, Batteries not included. And strangely, into the midst of all that noise, into the midst of all that commotion and even violence, Christmas comes with its silent, unobtrusive goodness and grace. That's what draws me near to it and involves me in it more deeply, I think, the older I become. For years, the meaning of Christmas has been for me, as I suspect also for many of you, for years, Christmas has been a tender remembrance of childhood moments wrapped within the warmth and love of my parents, affection and faith. A tenderness that was later expanded to include my sons, nieces and nephews. Christmas has been moments of remembering the love and contentment and shared longing of our lives. 
And there's certainly much of that that remains for me, but the older I become, the more I am drawn to the quietness of the Christmas event, the more I'm drawn to the non-aggressive mystery of it all. For so much of the ancient story suggests the very thing, a quiet moment imposed on the world's turbulent history with only muted accents of the night to disturb the holy couple arriving at Bethlehem in the evening, a hush replacing the noise of village streets, the doors of the shed closed against the darkness, nothing to be heard but the sound of animals welcoming the night and accepting the visitors who had come to join them. How silent it was that night as the wondrous gift was given. There was the birth cry, of course, and in that moment when the child drew a first breath of air into his tiny lungs, but soon was all quiet again as sleep came to the little one cradled in his mother's arms. I hope you will not misunderstand. I am not trying to be over, overly sentimental. It's just that I'm always filled with a sense of awe by the miracle of a child's birth. Whether it's birth of your child, children, the birth of grandchildren, or the birth of the one whom the angels dare to call Savior and Lord. The birth of a child fills me with awe simply because some deep human instinct tells me that babies are a sign of our human creativity at its best. That they are a sign of that still open and vital future we call life. And that is the magnificent and the wondrous miracle of Christmas too in that silent night whereby God touches the earth with goodness and grace to become one of us, that we might be one with God. For just as the babies are vulnerable and cannot hurt us, just so the hushed good news of Christmas quietly whispers that God comes near to us, vulnerable and unprotected, open and free. It's quite remarkable, really, this quiet whisper that brings a hush to the earth on this night, for it is our faith's assurance that the one who has put the planets in motion, who caused the stars to shine, the one who thunders from the mountaintop, causing a Moses to tremble and striking fear into the guilt-ridden heart of a King David. This one, who is God from God and light from light, is revealed as a self-disclosing word whispered, a word enfleshed as a child whose birth is announced not by thunder, but by singing. How quietly and silently the wondrous gift is given. Into the midst of all the clamor, blanketing the interstates and runways of our world and threatening to undo the silent night, into such a time and such a place, Christmas comes, quietly placing the eye and the ear of faith to the cradle. To us a child is born, to us a son is given, Prince of Peace. And so however deep the hurt, however old the anger, however dispirited the heart of any one of us, our God comes to us as vulnerable and unprotected as our own little ones, quietly, assuring us of his presence in our midst 
and then from his manger crib invites us to his side that we might be signs of his goodness and hope to all the world and to those who touch our lives. So the Christmas story draws us once again to the manger. And there at the manger is rekindled the hopes and dreams that to such a God as this, the violence and the noise in our own lives might be stilled. And the peace and quiet joy of coming tonight might find a place in our noisy world. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. Amen and amen. Go in peace, embraced by the mystical peace and quietness of Christmas.